Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep, and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. If you follow me on this channel, uh, you know that. I cover all kinds of different types of stuff, like news, politics, movies, some personal things, and gaming things and computer things, like this right here in regards to the Commodore 64 returning. One of the most popular computers um, of all time uh, is actually coming back, but uh, more of a, obviously more of a modern type of thing. Uh, and here it is, uh, right here. It's, it's not going to be like one of those little uh, mini uh, computers um, done on that one uh, little motherboard type of thing. I forgot what it was called. Um, no, this is actually going to be a full-size keyboard, just like the original Commodore 64, but it's going to have USB on there and HDMI output. But, yeah, it'll be completely uh, fully functional. It'll come with 64 retro games pre-installed. Will Flight Simulator be one of them? <laughs> I want Flight Simulator on it. I can play it on an emulator, but it would be cool to, to have it on an actual... Commodore 64 and hook that up to a TV. Anyway, let's talk about this. I have a couple of articles on this, so we'll, we'll go over uh, both. They're generally going to be about the same, but um, I will we'll go over them both, and the links will be in the description. If many consoles like the NES and SNES Classic Edition have proved anything, it's that gaming nostalgia is in full swing. But while the Mini C64 is great, if you just want access to the library classic PC games, its fun size keyboard isn't exactly practical. Practical For those nostalgic uh, for the true PC classic experience, this full size C64 keyboard fills the gap. It's a classic PC, complete with a boot to basic option, and 64 classics like Paradroid and Boulder Dash pre-installed, as well as a fully functioning C64 keyboard to control those games. It still has the same footprint of the original Commodore 64 also. Put in the Epics uh, games too. I used to play Summer Games, Winter Games, Summer Games 2. Um, oh man, the the movie... The uh, Monster Movie Game. Oh man, I can't remember what it is. It's, uh, it's on this channel. Um... It's uh, Star Fox plays the movie monster game. I'll put a thumbnail up, um, and I'll actually I'll I'll put some uh, thumbnails that you can click on on the uh, end of the uh, end of the end of the video. Out of all the videos that I have on this channel, that is the number one video that has been watched on this channel is the monster movie game. <laughs> Which is interesting. I I did too. I did. I've done a couple of those. Um, it was way, way, way back, like five years ago, when I first started this channel. I did it around that time, and my daughter and I uh, recorded that video together. So I should do another one. I should do a, another three or f uh, another couple of videos because that one is is apparently. It's like one of the most popular ones on my channel. Um, and there are other C64 games I've done on this channel too. You'll be able to switch between three different modes that make it function like the classic Commodore 64 or the VIC-20 or play games via the game carousel. In addition, you'll be able to load any C64 or VIC-20 ROMs onto the keyboard console via any of the four USB ports. So if it doesn't come with Flight Simulator, you'll be able to put Flight Simulator on it. Uh, and basic syntax, of course, because that's how you got games to run back in the day. Uh, what do they mean by basic syntax? Uh, what they're talking about is you load up uh, basic and you type in uh, load. Uh, it's like eight dash comma one for like the disk drive or whatever, and then the title. It's kind of confusing, but it, it was along those lines. Uh, anyway, the C64 also includes an upgraded joystick with new micro switches. <laughs> Forbidden Forest. Yeah, that needs to be on there. So maybe gameplay accuracy will be a bit uh, better compared to the joystick that came with the C64 Mini. 
You can connect uh, the C64 to any TV or any gaming monitor with uh, an HDMI port, but it only supports 50 hertz and 60 hertz at 720. Um, it might look at a, a little. It might look at little weird. It might look a little weird trying to play old Commodore games on a 50-inch 4K TV or coding in BASIC. Though sticking with a smaller 1080p monitor might be the way to go. Yeah, sometimes some things don't look the greatest in 4K. They weren't meant to go that high. The full-size C64 would be available December 5th and is currently available for pre-order in the UK, Italy, Ireland, Germany, Spain, and Australia for around $200. That's kind of roughly... Oh, well, it was like somewhere between $200, $500 when it first came out. can't remember exactly. Um, but you could get... You could pick it up like Sears and... I don't know. Did Sears definitely. JCPenney... Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it wasn't just computer stores. You can get a um, Commodore 64. It's like the Atari 2600. You could have picked that up at, at regular stores, too. Uh, no word if there will be pre-orders in the U.S. or if the C64 will be available in the U.S. come December. Um, no, but I'm, I, I bet you people will buy them and will up the price. <laughs> They'll scalp them. Uh, for people in the U.S. who want them. We've reached out to Retro Games for comment, and we'll up this article, update this article uh, should we hear back. The C64 Mini, however, is available in the U.S. Well, pfft, I don't want the Mini. I want the, I want the keyboard. I want the full-size keyboard. Um, I'll show you something here in a moment. Let's like, take a look at this other article. So here's the Reborn Commodore 64 on the way. Uh, this is the keyboard. I don't know if this is the classic Commodore 64 or if that's supposed to be the new one. Okay, well that's all they're showing there. Um, if you yearn for the days when your video game devices came with built-in keyboards and had less power than your smartphone, you'll want to prepare yourself for December. Uh, talks about how it's uh, reborn. It uses HDMI. Uh, you can save your games or load up your own files through a USB stick. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, that's it. Okay, so there's nothing else. <laughs> there's nothing else on that article. I'll link it anyway. Um, so that way, uh, who knows, maybe you'll find something on here that I didn't. But let me show you uh, something. All right, I had to kind of dig a little bit, but... And, and my viewers of my Flight Sim videos know this, but yeah, Flight Simulator 2 for the uh, Commodore 64. <laughs> this is where I started uh, my love for Com um, Commodore. <laughs> um, it might have been. Uh, my love for Flight Simulator was with Flight Simulator 2 by Sublogic for the Commodore 64 computer. And I do have a series uh, on this channel, a world tour series where I uh, fly with um, Flight Simulator. And also, I've got this. Um, it's wrapped, never opened. It's one of the scenery discs um, for the Commodore 64. Scenery disc number seven. But, yeah, now obviously, um, these are going to be on the huge... <laughs> This probably, most likely, will not work uh, <laughs> unless they come up with something. But uh, yeah, this is on the uh, the original floppy, actual floppy disk, and the scenery disk is going to be the same way. But yeah, just kind of wanted to wanted to show that. So, uh, Commodore 64 has got a got a place in my heart, and so does the Commodore Amiga. The Co Commodore 64 was our very first uh, family computer when I was growing up, and the Commodore Amiga, specifically the 500, was my very first personal computer. Uh, that is the one that I saved up money for and uh, and paid and bought. And Flight Simulator 2 for the Amiga was the uh, just one of the first programs that I bought with it. And um, 
for those of you who are Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, fans, the Amiga version of Flight Simulator was the base basis of Microsoft Flight Simulator 3 and 4. It was based off of the Amiga version. And the Amiga version and the Atari ST version are relatively the same. But anyway, that's kind of going way off topic of the Commodore 64, but just kind of wanted to kind of show you my connection uh, with the C64. But what do you think? What do you think of this? I think this would be really cool uh, to have. And, um, you know, yeah, I, you know, I just, I just think it would be neat, uh, a neat little thing. I don't know if I'd really want to pay two, three hundred dollars for it, though. I mean, not when I can get like a real Commodore 64, but the problem is that you would have to, no, well, no, that's right. You could plug those things into regular TVs, but. I don't know. There could be adapters or something where you could plug a Commodore 64 into a modern uh, monitor or something like that. But I don't know if this is going to work as a C64 and a VIC-20, um, and it's got you know modern USB inputs and an HDMI cable. Why not go for something like this? Um, and then you can get the uh, the disk images put them on a on a on a USB stick and plug them in and you could still play the games I don't know seems kind of like a cool idea to me uh, what do you think what do you think uh, you think this is cool are you looking forward to it did you know about this um, are you outside of the US and will you be able to get this um, are you in the United States and you really wish you could get this uh, maybe you have a, a, a real Commodore 64 and you're just fine with that. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And um, if you're new, just subscribe. There's all kinds of stuff here. And other than that, I'll see you on another rambling video.